Hail everyone, this is Badgerlord Patrick. Half the reason I got into computer games as a kid had to do with this game, Roller Coaster Tycoon. This game is a special game. Not only because I think I've had, like, a dozen copies of the thing and its sequels, you could literally find it in cereal boxes back in the day. But to this day, this game is an excellent example of how one can use computers to learn and be creative. Aside from building just about anything, many of us have used it to learn about money management. Some learn physics to a degree, and anyone who never drowned or imprisoned a guest who was annoying him has not truly enjoyed Roller Coaster Tycoon to its full potential. Briefly, it was the brainchild of Chris Sawyer, whose first popular game was the brilliant transportation management sim Sid Meier's Railroad Tycoon... Uh, wait, no. It was actually Transport Tycoon. We're not gonna derail this review, though, and cause the deaths of hundreds of passengers, so uh, suffice to say this game looks very similar to Roller Coaster Tycoon graphically. But Roller Coaster Tycoon was born of Mr. Sawyer's desire to make a sequel to Transport Tycoon. That sequel was derailed when Chris Sawyer found out he really, really was fascinated with roller coasters and went all the way to code an entire amusement park simulator with roller coasters and other rides, but also with people riding them, countrysides to contain them, economics, and buildings and scenery. For many people, Thousands of people. This was one of the first games that let you build whatever you wanted, provided you raised the money. Most games are about controlling a character and learning how best to maneuver him or her so you can get around a treacherous map with dangerous enemies on it. Other games are about making money or building something successful or conquering an enemy. Believe me, I like games like that. They're great from time to time, but RCT did not make raising money or getting guests very hard. I mean, I failed sometimes back in the day, but I just as easily remember making a park with well over 1,000 guests where I had $100,000 and had paid all of my loan before year four. Mind you, the first time I played RCT, one of the first coasters I built was like this didn't even complete the track. Another I built was just... Yikes. But whereas some games punish or even end your game for making mistakes like this, RCT gives you room to learn. There aren't even any competitors or conquerors or AIs to cheese in order to make the one and only successful park like most games would have. You aren't looking for strategies to defy defeat most of the time. Most of the time, you were just building rides, building paths for your peeps to walk on, and building nice-looking and nice-riding things you wanted to, and trapping or drowning guests. You were in the zone, creating. And this emphasis on just enjoying and creating things is not just part of what makes theme parks and amusement parks fascinating and enjoyable. The creativity of this game, and indeed of theme parks as such, as I researched them later, was an early part of my desire for the good and the beautiful in life. Theme parks exist for no reason other than to delight, to look cool to provide experiences and rides you won't forget because they thrilled or were beautiful. The builders of theme parks have to consider not only economics and how many people they can cram into a square foot for however many dollars an hour, though as prices for funnel cakes indicate profit is definitely a motive, but every park I've seen or been to has looked at least impressive and kind of nice, if not very pretty, or even breathtakingly beautiful. Making something that looks appealing has to be part of the success of a theme park. Then there's this guy, Marcel Voss. 
I actually like him, and he's taught me a lot about the game I didn't know before, and he makes cool videos about questions I didn't even know I wanted answered about the game. He's probably the reason you charge $20 for an umbrella and build at least five of these coasters, I call them Marcel's Machine, and charge $5 for each of them in any given park. But while he definitely has a talent for showing how to cheese the game to make buco money, his other great talent, building coasters with high stats, testifies that being effective is also often beautiful. Not always. But that just proves, and he proves, that video games imitate life only so far. You're only limited by the rules of the game and your own imagination. And in RCT in particular, you get more out of it by applying your imagination and your interests, because the few rules of the game exist entirely so you can take a park and make it even more interesting. I could talk about particular parks in the game, or particular rides, particular quirks of the game, but really this game and its sequels aren't hard to get into just by going in and trying whatever you want. There are rules, and good people like Marcel Voss make videos if you want to learn, but I, when I was a kid, didn't need any more than the tutorial. After that, I got to enjoy time and the world passing by as I made tasteful parks and cracking coasters.